Welcome back. I'm Austin Andrus and this is Ingenious Designs. It's winter in the Northern Hemisphere right now, which makes this a perfect moment to discuss a perennial problem among book collectors. I live in a part of the United States where it's usually pretty humid. But in the winter, especially once I turn my central heating on, the air dries out. And once it does, my skin starts itching, my piano goes out of tune, and some of my book covers start to warp. This happens because as leather dries, it shrinks. This pulls on the outside of the cover and causes it to deform. This can happen in leather-bound books, but it also happens in some other types of bindings as well. It can happen with hard covers, as well as soft cover books, in my handmade books and in professionally bound editions like this. Today I want to discuss steps that you can take to mitigate the risk of this happening in the books that you bind. I'll also try out ideas from around the internet to see if we can solve the problem once it occurs. Shall we get into it? They say that prevention is the best cure. You can start as early as the bookbinding process to minimize your risk of cover warpage. Now, when I said that drying leather pulls the cover boards out of shape, that was a bit of an oversimplification, because the leather isn't exactly unopposed. On the other side of the cover is the book's end paper, which also responds to changes in heat and humidity, and which will pull in the opposite direction. Ideally, the right leather and the right end paper will balance the forces on each side of the cover and prevent warping. You can see this at work in my own book collection. Many covers seem to have leather-paper combinations close to the happy medium and have experienced little or no warp, while others seem to be less balanced. These two books are from the same series and have the same leather and chipboard as each other, but only one is warped. The difference is that on this book, I liked the map on the inside cover, so I tried using the paperback cover as an end paper. Apparently, that didn't resist the pull of the leather as well as the regular end paper did. For a more in-depth look at balancing forces on your book covers, I would recommend an excellent video on the topic by Darren Schneider at the Daz Bookbinding channel. Another binding technique that Darren mentions to reduce the pull on the outside of covers is to not glue the leather onto the broad outer face of the board, instead securing it only with the tabs on the inner surface of the cover. This would be a pretty drastic change to my book binding technique, so I haven't tried it myself, but you might attempt it if warping has been a big problem for you. You can also protect your books by how you display them. You'll usually see the most warping in the last book in a row or the top book on a stack because they have the most surface area exposed to air and the least compression from other books. It might offend your OCD, but periodically shuffling the order of your books can help to keep one from getting too out of shape. I also like to use heavy stone bookends which hold the books close together and resist any outward forces. Despite your very best efforts, a handful of your books might still get bent out of shape over time. So what do you do then? Well, first off, don't freak out. This is more likely than not just a seasonal thing, and if you wait a few months, then the humidity will rise again, and the book covers will absorb the moisture, become pliable, and you can bend them back into shape. But if you're looking for a more immediate solution than that, then the overwhelming advice of the internet is to take the offending volume and squash it flat overnight under a pile of books or in a book press. Well, that's exactly what I'm trying here. A day later, let's see how things have turned out. Well, I think that's a little bit better. But honestly, I'm still not happy with it. And this is not a big surprise to me. The first time that I started seeing warping in my covers, I went straight to the book press. It's the first thing that I tried. And this is about the result that I got. But now I've done it on camera with you. Let's try something else, okay? All other techniques involve reintroducing moisture to the cover in one form or another. Werner Rebsamen from Bound to be Bound Bookstore suggests using a sponge to apply a little water to the inside of the book covers. This is interesting. It never occurred to me to moisten the insides. A moisture barrier is placed between the covers and the pages. Baking paper is my go-to for such purposes. Then, just like before, you pop the book in the press overnight. Looking at this edition of The House at Pooh Corner as it comes out of the press, I'm super impressed. The covers were initially almost perfectly straight. But after about a week back on the shelf, the leather started to go back to its old ways. 
Silly old book. The next idea comes from Just Jim on LibraryThing.com. He says you can rehumidify the air around your books by putting half a glass of water on the shelf. Now, theoretically, this should recreate summertime environmental conditions. So, after a day next to the glass, I gave the cover of this book a stretch and popped it in the press as well. Despite the glass being half full, my initial take on this technique was less optimistic than the last one. And indeed, a week later you could hardly tell that I'd done anything to fight the warp. Of course, the point of the glass was just to act as a poor man's humidifier, so would the real thing do better? Lilith Cat from Library Thing proposes humidifiers as a tool to prevent warping in the first place, which makes perfect sense, and Werner from Bound to be Bound specifies that the Library of Congress recommends a relative humidity of 45 to 50 percent. So I bought a machine programmed to bring the humidity to 50 percent and maintain it there. After a day in the new climate, I did the same thing as before, stretching the cover out and pressing the book overnight. I was impressed with the results. This particular book was the worst in my collection, but it came out almost completely fixed. One cover still doesn't rest completely closed, but the bend in the boards is gone. Better yet, those gains were maintained a week later. Well, that about wraps up my little experiment, so let's rank the results! In my opinion, the cup on a shelf method had the smallest gains overall, plus the highest risk of disaster if the cup were to spill. Moistening the inside of the covers produced impressive results cheaply, and it worked faster than other techniques. But the improvement didn't seem to last. So in the end, my recommendation goes to the humidifier for the huge improvement seen in my most warped book, and for its potential to prevent the problem from coming back. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion. May you never need to use it. If you have other tips and tricks that have worked for you, leave them in the comments for the whole community to enjoy. I have a bunch more exciting bookbinding topics to cover, as well as other videos in the pipeline. So stay tuned, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, stay creative.